Yeah, yeah. Well, actually, he could probably get it. Nothing, though, if somebody has something contagious. Okay. All right. I'll, I'll Got to be natural causes. Don't worry about those natural causes. Yeah. Mrs. Florax throwing the thing a tumble dry. Oh, And you started it. All right, Miss King, let's start. Okay. <laughs> right. Is it time? It's, it's time. Ridiculous. Okay. It so, is time. Okay, we're going to, I'm going to just switch uh, agendas a little bit. We're going to start with health and rec. Okay. Call to order health and recreation. Okay, City of Schenectady and SGA. Mr. Yeah, basically, we um, are looking to enter an agreement with the USDA where we're going to be putting up $150,000. They're going to match that amount, and that's going to be a prerequisite to the state providing us with that million dollar grant as well. And we all have to pay for it all. It's not quite a prerequisite. We're piecing together funding from different sources to accomplish a series of things, of which one is the upgrading of the tennis courts. At Central Park. Correct. And I believe, do we have a presentation tonight mm -hmm. from 15 Clubs? Yes. Oh, on. okay. Where's the tennis rackets? I, I forgot the rackets. I'm sorry. <laughs> We're going to have you come down at this end oh. so you can be on TV. Yes. Oh, yes. oh boy. Yes. Thank goodness. <laughs> Thank there you. There you go. <laughs> uh, I think you have this. Um, all in front of you, yeah. so I just have a bigger copy, but if anyone needs these, they give me a couple extras. So I'm going to make this kind of brief. We were here in front of you a couple years ago about redoing Michigan Avenue, those mm -hmm. tennis courts. That was a little different. That was very um, mission central for 15 Love. So that's, you know, right in the heart of the inner city, and 15 Love raised all of those funds, and we were just asking for your permission to kind of do the work there. Um, we did it. It's gorgeous. I hope you've all mm -hmm. been by. It it's, gets so much use from the community. It's really a wonderful site. So it's also increased o the overall tennis participation and really helps out with this Central Park project. So Central Park is a site that's critical to 15 Love as well. We actually partner with the, the sport camp there. We, we work with a bunch of kids uh, two days in the mornings and then we have our general program two days in the evenings all summer long there as well. So we're easily serving well over 200 kids every summer through our free uh, tennis and education and life skills program at Central Park alone. Um, but Central Park is really central to a lot of tennis in the area. But just a little background, you have kind of our mission which is just to reach out to the inner city youth of the capital region. Um, I gave you just some other basics on 15 Love, and I, I don't need to go through, you know, you can all look through this stuff, yeah. I'm not going to keep yeah. you forever, so, uh, but we have, a lot of people think of us as just free tennis, it's really, tennis is the way that we reach out to kids, it's really to, every tennis lesson includes what we call an offer, which is a life skill session, so we're talking to them about drugs, we're talking to them about education, and we're doing it in a fun way, so we talk to them about the geography um, and government, we talk to them about um, the environment and we do it with, you know, we use these foam tennis balls and they bring in used uh, water bottles and they do bowling with it and we talk about how many times, how many water bottles are using, how many times that goes around the earth every year, you know, the, it's like two and a half times um, all the water bottles that we use. And so, you know, we, we try to make it fun and interesting and engaging for the kids and uh, it, it really works. So our numbers have just, I, I kind of pulled out our proposal for Michigan Avenue and our numbers have increased by hundreds since just two years ago, just in Schenectady. So, you know, we're really doing what we can, um, you know, catching them on the tennis court and really getting them into some strong uh, additional programs. So we have a lot of kids from Schenectady who are in our excellence programs. They're playing year-round. They're going on to college. And I just told you uh, very quickly, uh, we have some graduates. I just got one of our graduates from Schenectady is now in Texas. He went through Teach for America. We, you know, wrote him all his recommendations there, and he's he actually just became a reverend in Texas. So he's our only reverend, and he came from Schenectady, um, and he's got you know just a gorgeous family. But we've had a couple of teachers come out of Schenectady. Uh, 
a couple of engineers from out of Schenectady. So we have we had two lawyers from Albany. I don't know. If, we haven't had any from Schenectady. We'll work on that. And a CPA from Albany too. So we'll we'll push our kids in those directions. Um, but you're, throughout the region, 1511 is regional, so we serve about 4,200 kids throughout the region each year. Um, and like I mentioned, in Schenectady, we're up at about 1,750 just in Schenectady. 82% of our kids come from low to moderate income homes. And one that's kind of stayed static. I've been with 15 Love for longer than I want to admit now. <laughs> um, but for about 14 years, and that's kind of stayed static. What hasn't is female-headed households, which I think is interesting. That was always below 50% when I started. It's up at 60, up around there now. Um, but you know that's that's what we're doing. So that's those are the kids we're serving, and we're doing whatever we can. Uh, Wednesday, Schenectady schools, I believe, have school, all the new schools do not, but we're running an event Wednesday from 3 to 7 p.m. It's a free book giveaway. We do have kids coming in. They'll periodically drive from Schenectady to come to these. So our, we have a gardening program there. We do have kids from Schenectady that come to the gardening program as well throughout the summer, but there will be a, an open house to be able to take vegetables from the garden on Wednesday. They'll get as many free books. We literally give them a bag, and they just, until they can't carry it anymore, fill it. It's a huge... Um, so we collect used children's books all year. We hand them out in our summer program, so every kid at Central Park and Michigan Avenue and Jerry Burrell, they're all getting free books all summer long. So, and then we have these two just big giveaway days where they can come and you know, get all the reading they need to get in, which is really helpful because a lot of the kids that we serve don't have books at home, you know, and the teachers want them reading every night, so it works out. Um, here's a, there's also just a list of all the locations. There are 18 different locations in Schenectady. So, I gave you a list of all those locations and the people that we're partnering with here. Um, moving on to the Central Park thing more is the 15 Love is kind of a, we're a member of the USTA. We're in the Eastern section. So it's connected to the Eastern section. And um, I'm, a, I'm on the USTA's board personally, um, but we're partnering with them. The USTA are the ones providing the, the funding this time. So they're providing $150,000 to read to renovate the Central Park Tennis Court. It's critical for them because they do a lot of, they like to do sectional events here. And they did do them until this year. And unfortunately, because of the condition of the tennis courts, they had to move their sectional events to Westchester. And nobody on state likes when things move down to Westchester. We want to keep them up here. So they serve all of New York State. Schenectady is really central, so it's a nice location. So um, they've committed $150,000 in the matching, so they will pay half of the cost, um, up to $150,000 to redo the courts. But they, there's so much that goes on here um, in Schenectady besides their tournaments that I've kind of listed, the current utilization, I kind of listed that all out for you. There are tournaments here. There's so much league play, just people from the region coming nonstop, just and everybody wants to play at Central Park. And now Michigan Avenue, actually, because we have the restroom there. People actually really like the quiet there, so they, they do like both facilities, but everybody kind of likes Central Park. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so, and then the Schenectady High School, Niski Unit High School, and Siena College all use Central Park as their home base. The economic impact, I think, is what honestly surprised me the most. I only put together the economic impact for the USTA sectional tournaments because I have the numbers on those. I didn't put it together. All of the high school sectionals for boys and girls are held at Central Park all of these league matches, and I gave you the numbers of people coming in, there's like 244 people each week that come to Schenectady to play these league matches, obviously some of them are from Schenectady, but they're regional people coming in. Um, I didn't give you any numbers associated with that. This is only the nine special tournaments that the USTA for 2015 had to move to Westchester because of the condition of the courts. And so if you look at this, where it says economic impact, it's, um, Six hundred sixty-six thousand two hundred fifty dollars is the economic impact to Schenectady mm. just for those nine events, and that only includes their lodging and their meals. We know for a fact that they like to come and have fun. Yeah. <laughs> so we know for a fact that they are out. You know, a lot of them like to go shopping. I realize some of that revenue is not Schenectady County, but um, they they like to go out at night. I know they're they're going out and probably spending more than that per diem that I put in there that I found for Schenectady County mm -hmm. on their meals and having fun at the end of the night. So, And also I only counted the players, in, in the case of the juniors, one parent. Usually even the adult players are bringing somebody with them and the junior players are usually bringing a whole family. So in all honesty, this number is probably much higher. 
but I didn't want to mislead you, so I gave you what's basic. But um, and like I said, this is only those nine tournaments. So really, the economic impact for Schenectady through the Central Park tennis courts, I think, is probably massive. Um, if those courts were to slip into complete disrepair, there are two courts, two, really three courts currently, that are completely unplayable, unsafe. And then there's a line that the courts, there is a, um, a thing, a diagram here. And that left side, the front four courts and the back five courts on that left side, I, if you can't see it, I have it in color on mine, they were in red, but um, the, there's a step down, so you can kind of see mine is red. So there's a step down right here, and the way the fence is, it, it wasn't secured along the concrete curb, so it bows out. There's a huge space. I mean, I can fit my foot in there. Mm. I'm shocked that a child hasn't really been injured, uh, you know, running back for a ball or something and just dropped their foot right back there. I'm, I'm amazed that no one's really been hurt in that way. Um, last year, a, the trees, the overhang trees, which is part of this, the tree removal is part of this plan, uh, a branch was hanging over the courts literally by about two minutes missed um, a child who was playing a tournament. Just, it came down. And right onto the tennis court right where they were playing. So we know that there are safety issues at the court that really have to be addressed, even if this whole project isn't done, there are safety issues that have to be addressed for it to be, for anyone to continue playing there. But uh, if we want the USTA tournaments to come back, we want the leagues to continue to play there, the, then the full project really has to be done, mm -hmm. or they're going to stay in Westchester, unfortunately. Um, I wanted to get through this really quickly, and I'm happy to give you time to ask questions. Just so you know what the project will do, that left side that I showed you, those red ports, they are getting milled and completely reconstructed. Um, and then there will be new fencing around the entire facility. The blue ports over here, um, they're not in as bad shape, so these will just get a heavy repair with fabric and everything, and then everything will be resurfaced. Um, so currently, it will just be these will be milled. This will these four will turn into five, so we're adding a port to the facility as well, which will help with large tournaments and stuff. And then um, these will get repaired, but new fencing because it we just don't think it, it'll look good. The fencing is pretty bad all the way around, so we don't think that the fencing just on one side would look right. So the fencing will go around the whole facility. We talked about um, maybe adding a large, if these ports ever do need to be redone, adding in a large door here so that machinery can get in so the fencing doesn't have to be redone if these upper ports you know, have to be milled at some point. So we're, we're possibly going to add in a, a large um, you know, fence door right here. That makes sense, yeah. um, it also includes adding a shed that will have an overhang for a tournament desk, and it'll have um, some electricity on the outside for their computer and stuff, uh, and also two rest unisex restroom stalls, so it's like two separate doors, a wall in between. I know we have a lot of discussion about what exactly this means, so it's not, you're not walking into one place with two stalls, it's two separate rooms. Um, and uh, at the facility, and then possibly a, an extra space within that area for an ice machine and like a spigot for water for the for the large events. Mm -hmm. Those would be under lock and key. The person, Jim Neal, runs Central Park, if any of you are familiar with him, so he'll have the keys to that and then they'll, they'll only be open for large events um, other than when the facility is open by a city staff person in the summer. So they won't be just generally open. Uh, so I think that's all I have for you. <laughs> But if you have questions, I am happy to answer them. Does anyone have questions? Yes. yes. What is the overall cost for this project? It's about $300,000. So there are some costs that we aren't completely sure about. The bathrooms are a little bit of a mystery. The, we've been working with the um, city engineer and with others to figure out exactly where they can be placed. The placement was a little bit of an issue. And um, what the exact cost of getting all that in is, there's a little bit of a question mark. but. Where we added in just for the restrooms, um, I, I did just a kind of a preliminary budget, and I had about thirty thousand dollars just for the restroom portion, which I'm hoping is safe. So this is additional to the three hundred thousand. No, no, no. no this is, this is included. included. Yeah. 
So if there are additional funds that need to be raised, that's where 15 Love is going to come in as well. So um, we, we will help to raise, if we have to, additional funds. We're hoping we can get this done in the $300,000 budget. Because 15 Love, just having raised $300,000 for tennis courts in this city, we think it could be tough to raise private funds again. Yeah. Um, at least using the context that we have. But there have been some people who have made personal donations or are willing to make personal donations to make this happen. So mm -hmm. I think we'll be able to do it if that cost goes any higher. But it, exactly. we're hoping it won't. Yep, so thank you. Uh, so Mr. Mayor, I suppose you, is this 150 coming out of the grant with uh, Sullivan Stack? No. Yep. Or where is the 150 coming from? City of Schenectady funds. City of Schenectady funds. All right, and then we talked about, I know the Michigan Avenue Project had a partnership with the county as well. Um, is there any way we can contact the county to maybe, you know, maybe if there's anything accessible for this to partner with those folks? Um, when we look at those relationships that uh, some of the uh, Michigan Avenue, and we use city crews and we'll say things some county equipment to do some of the right. site work. We're looking to do that uh, again. At this project. this project, we're going to come in with uh, some of the heavy equipment uh, do some of the, uh, again, what we'll call site preparation mm -hmm. for the uh, other contractors that would come in. So we're looking to leverage the money as much as we can. And okay. there, the last part, we were looking to use tight capital reserves on okay. this. Capital reserves? Capital reserves. So just to clarify, you're saying that the 150 could be some in kind mm -hmm. that we'd be doing it with it to be told uh, all at cash? At this point, we're committing $150,000. Mm -hmm. but to make sure we do the project right and leverage it. You know, Amber talks about you know, the bathrooms and some of the other things might go over. By using some of the city crews in there to do uh, preparation work, takes the pressure off the overall budget. So that there would be a little bit of flexibility. And I know these projects, when you get in, there's always something somebody wants to add so that you know, uh, the numbers look very tight. The way they are now, but, uh, next spring we're starting and people will want a little bit more or there will be some surprise that will be a little bit extra. So just okay. to follow, so we're looking to start this in the spring of, of 16, so I that it's completed for the tennis yeah, season? Yeah, looking as soon as the frost right? goes out of the ground, we'll okay. mobilize on this. Right. Because there's actually a term that is coming in. So there are two, I think they're going to not schedule the June just to be safe because that made them a little nervous. Right. Um, but they're going to schedule the later uh, 2016. the schedule so. <laughs> 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 so, But they, the other thing I should have mentioned is the USTA is willing to commit um, 10, even 20 years of bringing this tournament back if the courts are in playable condition. Okay. So. Very good. That's good. Yeah. Um, and that was, I believe that's put into the contract that the USDA and the yes. city would be entering into. Okay. Very good. I'll, I'll move this, uh, Madam Chair, if there's no more questions. Well, I haven't asked that question yet. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, if there's no other questions, I'll move it. Are there any other questions around this? Um, so, let me just, so we're, we're with this, Madam President, we're committing to the 150000 that is in the reserve funds already. Mm -hmm. Just wanted to make sure that we cash is all there. Have it under cover. What's that? You have it under cover. Oh, you have it under cover. Under okay. the mattress. <laughs> Smooth. I'll uh, second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank very you good. very Thanks. much. Take care. Yes. All right. All right. Next on the agenda is uh, authorization for a fall special rates for Connecticut Municipal Golf Course. Mr. Wallace. And company. <laughs> Hello. 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 Very well. So we're trying to present a, uh, a fall special for the golf course. Uh, historically, in the months of October and November, our number of rounds declines for, as you can see in the letter that I printed up before Chris. It could, it could be a number of reasons. People start heading south, uh, school's back in session. Um, other golf courses are also promoting their facilities for a much lower rate. In fact, I get an influx of phone calls right about this time of year from various people uh, wondering what our fall rates are. And my answer is that we don't have one. 
Okay. So they say, okay, and then usually they can take their business elsewhere. Um, so this way I think we can stay competitive and kind of maybe boost our rounds for the fall. And I'm looking to just start this on October 1st to the time we close. So we're looking for about a month and a half time. But I think it would be a nice promotion. You know, it's a good time to just try to see if it works. Good mm -hmm. experimentation, see if it works. Um, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, our rates at the golf course increase a couple dollars, which is why you see the rate increase for those three days. So it'll be just a little bit, be a little bit more on the weekend days as opposed to during the weekdays. But I think it's a pretty good deal, but it only pertains if it's four players. And I like the fact that it would just be a flat rate so you don't get into the, you know, I have three residents and one non-resident, or two residents, two non-residents. It's just one flat rate is the same for everybody. Whether they're a senior, veteran, or not, it's the same rate for everybody. Mm -hmm. Yes? So, you said, we have, um, you currently have rates for Fortson? Yeah, well, right now, it's, right now it's just billed as an individual. Okay. There, there is no current special in place at all. Okay. This would just be a brand new promotion that we're like to run. Okay. All right. That's so what would the normal rate be for four non-resident players in the car? Uh, for a resident right now would be 30. No, non-resident. Non-resident? Peak, peak resident or non-resident to ride on the weekend is $44. Okay. During the week? On a weekend. During the week is 42 So it only increases $2. So and the car, that includes car? That includes car, yeah. Other questions? Do you have any um, competitors rates? The other golf course charging? Currently I don't because they change all the time, but I can get those for you. I would like uh, Monday through Thursday and a Friday through Saturday. Specials or rates? Well, rates are special that they offer. The fall rates. Yeah, right. I mean, I have the rates currently from other golf courses listed in our pro shop. Okay. So when people come in, they can actually see that ours are cheaper than everybody else's. But I don't know what their fall rates are just yet. Yeah. They're all different everywhere. Right. But I think that is important information that we, so we know if we're being competitive, if we're like really, really being a little bit lower, it could be a little bit more. So yeah, I, I mean, I can important. get that information to you and send it to you. Don't yeah, you can have a few comparisons. That would be, that would be yeah. Good. Yeah. I can do that for you. Other questions? So at this point, you're asking for us to, uh, to give a resolution on this. All right. Mm -hmm. So, um, I'm comfortable as long as we, have, you know, as long as we can take a look at the rates and make sure that we're, you know, within uh, our competitors, yep. if, our, if our price ranges are. So, um, based on having that information by next week, if everybody else is comfortable with that. I do know there's two courses up in the Clifton Park area that are public facilities: Eagle Crest and uh, Fairways of Half Moon, and they run a very similar rate. I think Fairways of Half Moon does does that special, but they also include soup and sandwich. Oh, okay. Well, they can do that because they don't lease their restaurant out like we oh, do. Okay. Oh, part of the thing, yeah. So they, they all have different promotions. They add some kind of lunch special in there sure. or uh, just mm -hmm. a flat rate of golf. But see, now this is the time in, in fall, people like to start traveling. Mm -hmm. It's a great time to play golf. It's scenic. Leaves are changing, so everybody's starting to kind of bounce around. They want to see different golf courses. So I see a lot of new faces this time of year that I don't normally see throughout the year. That's good. So, that's why I'd like to kind of get that through. But I will get that information to you ASAP. Very good. Perfect. So with that manager, I'll move it. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. So how do you, um, since this is something new, how do you give a plan on how to promote this so that people know that here's a rate that... Yeah, you know, um, I would start putting it on our website. We have a Facebook page, and I would also start promoting it, and I would promote it around the club. But, like I said, I get so many phone calls okay. that... So you're being responsive to your customers? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I would love to maybe put some of the paper if we can, if that's possible. I would yeah, like to something like that. Right. Yes, we we could. Could. Do you have like a mailing list of all your, uh, your customers? So you can mail flyer out, the special flyers out? To um, the I don't regulars? really have an email list, no. Or mailing address? Or you can mail I, flyers I could get one together. I could start trying to get one together. I currently don't have that. 
You might want to look into that. Yeah. For next year. Beneficial. For sure. next year. For next year. <laughs> yeah. No, I just think it's good that if they're doing this, that the more people know that. It's yes. Good. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you. Ms. Russell. Madam Chair, might I suggest that all of us share it on Facebook? Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> social, media, social media is a great way to get the word out also. So I think as council members, we could all, we could all assist. If we all have Facebook in, in our city, in our city system. It would be good if the council put together a couple of foursomes and went up and played on the Okay, I'm good for that. All right. <laughs> <laughs> maybe you don't have to. So it's been moved. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Do you want to just share the flyer with us so we can pass it around? Yeah, I know. I'll send it on. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Is there anything else to come before health and recreation? If not, entertain a motion. Motion adjourned. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I'd like to call to order public service and utilities. We have one item on the agenda. Final review from our public hearing on Chapter 151, excavations in Chapter 228, Sandwalks and Street. Thank you. Uh, I don't quite know how we want to handle this item. So we did meet with National Grid, uh, both myself uh, and uh, Mr. Altico and David Brown. We met with their representatives. They did have some questions. I would say that they were all pretty benign in nature. It was just clarifications uh, and clarifications of terms and some just kind of suggestions on how we can word things to make things a little bit clearer. Um, Carl, have you had a chance to put that together in a summary? I didn't know how, how we wanted to proceed with it going forward. Um, I haven't really what they wanted in place. There's clarifications. I know there's one uh, substantive term we've been talking about at the end. This is the word. We want things done within three feet of the curb. They were looking for two feet. And I know uh, Mr. Wall's evaluating that. I think based on the conversation, um, nothing else popped out to me that uh, was a reason that we shouldn't move forward and we can have a final draft of the legislation that will be substantially the same as what the council had a public hearing on by the end of this week. So you don't feel the need to hold it for two weeks? I don't. No. So you're, you said that there, there was a, the one change that, that you thought was pretty significant. Is that you, you're including that in your final draft of this? I didn't think it was significant. That was the only thing. They asked for clarification on a number of items, mm -hmm. and that's the only uh, part of the legislation that they wanted to change from what we had. So I think that's something that's a technical thing that uh, Long, take a I look at and give a recommendation on right. uh, When will we, we be able to see the final draft? Can we have it by Thursday or Friday just so we have time? To Definitely by Friday or for the weekend. That time of the year. It's getting to be that time. So, what you have before you is a legislative request to start the uh, public hearing process for the 2016 budget, and in the request lays out the uh, respective dates that are being proposed for the call for public hearing, actually holding the hearing, and then review thereafter. Questions, comments? No. I know that I will be working with Ms. Dijanova this week to finalize the budget meeting schedule. We're all on the edge of your seats waiting. <laughs> um, so, everybody's good? Yeah. I'll let you move this. All right. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Excellent. Thank you. Anything else to come before Finance Committee this evening? Motion adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Thank you. All right, I'm going to call to order City Development and Planning. Uh, first item on the agenda is a revocable permit for SBC at 201 State Street, the Kindle Building. 
Hello. What we have in front of us is Report School Permit Number 598 for the Stansky County Community College, uh, which is at the Kindle Building. Uh, it is a typical blade sign, as you can see on, I believe it's the fourth page, that says uh, SECC Kindle. Uh, it has gone through planning, has gone through, I believe, the Historic Commission. It has been approved on all the levels, and it is in keeping with the nature of what we are doing downtown. Questions? Okay, okay moved. Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Great, thank you. Thank you. All right, uh, calling for a public hearing on Water Street abandoned. Mr. Stryker. Okay, this is the, the next logical step in the expansion of Liberty Park, which will should occur next year. And uh, so Water Street has been predominantly been shut down for over a year when the gate, gate went up over at Washington Avenue. Only a small portion of it remains open. Uh, the plan would be to close the entire street down. So it's just need a public hearing. Engineering has reviewed this. The utilities and uh, systems under that road will remain there. Water, sewer, whatever's there. But they'll be under the park. And they'll still be acceptable as repairs needed. But so the plan would be a proper public hearing. Uh, the public hearing will be on Tuesday, October 13th. And then the discussion on October 19th and a final vote, if you see fit, on October 26th. Questions? Ms. Brazo. Is there any um, basic time or guess that the berms will be removed in that area? We're, right now I'm working it out with parks to make sure that we try and do some of that this fall as pre-development. I uh, have, have to get it by SHPO to convince them that the berms that were placed there in the 80s, there won't be any historic significance with their removal. So that should be a lot. Yes. Okay. There's just, you know, I, I, there's um, increased concern about activities that happen in that area. I directed so, staff to cut the bushes down and yeah, start to clear it right. uh, about the actual burns. Item number three, uh, doing a ceremonial resolution for childhood cancer. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'll maintain a motion to approve that. <laughs> okay. Seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Um, ceremonial resolution for childhood cancer awareness month. Okay. Can move it. Okay. All in favor? Aye. And also ceremonial resolution for Schenectady's the place. I think you've all heard the song we will have it it will be presented to us next monday night nice. um and i'm just thinking of a, at this point a resolution just commending okay. the folks and recognizing it and i don't know that we want to go as far to make it the official song just yet but but at least to get it out there it's, it's really neat yeah. so all right so Ms. Okay. Hill, second Ms. ferrari all in favor Aye. Um, item number five is again a letter of support for the New York Folklore Grant application. Um, I think to everybody's knowledge there's no other group applying for this money so um, and Ellen McHale of course was here two weeks ago to, to present that so if no one has any objections I'll entertain a motion to approve that. Oh, to, to do the letter. Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Uh, the City of Schenectady's second annual manufacturing week. Mr. Putman, you wanted to say a few brief words? Sure, real briefly. So just uh, looking for an opportunity to promote um, Schenectady's second annual manufacturing week is coming up. Kicks off on National Manufacturing Day, which is uh, Friday, October 2nd. Um, so we'll be doing two events at my side, uh, including a women in manufacturing panel event um, at 9 o'clock, followed by a press conference hosted by uh, Mayor McCarthy at 10 just looking for an opportunity to promote that at the yeah. city council meeting. So they, they will be doing a, a much you know, more involved presentation to us Monday night, next Monday night. Okay. So, um, all right, so I don't think we have to move anything on that. Um, the mayor had one other item that I think that he passed out. Um, mayor, do you want to just explain that again for anyone who wasn't here? Uh, under the governor's uh, regional economic development councils, the regions compete for <coughs> funding, uh, tax credits, incentives, grants at the state level. Uh, 
this next round, the uh, government has put out a uh, billion and a half dollars, which three regions will be awarded five hundred million dollars. Nice. Very significant amount of money. But the other regions will get their kind of regular appropriation. They're developing uh, a regional plan and looking for resolutions of uh, generic support from uh, legislative bodies within the uh, capital district regional economic development uh, region, which goes from Bethlehem to Valley, going up through Saratoga. And, uh, so I'm asking the council to consider doing a uh, resolution. And I apologize, I forwarded it's a fairly large packet emailed to the clerk's office this afternoon, which you can review. So it is not 100% cast in stone. And also, it's the nature of it where there's some level of confidentiality because if we had a brilliant idea and announced it publicly, you know, the Southern Tier in Western New York might put it in their uh, application. So at this point, uh, it's more in the generic resolution in support of the application, which has quite been finalized, but there is some information being sent to the consumer specific question. Okay, here we go. I'm going to get the background and the details. And, Questions? No, um, I think, so, but I will say that I'm, I'm familiar with this process because I've attended some of the meetings with all these connectivities or I have been doing, and uh, there is a document out there that doesn't give away a lot of things. So, um, so I, I think it's outstanding, and based on the general um, outline that, we've seen, that I've seen so far, that you know, there's, I think we have, we have a good opportunity to, to get that. So, I'm certainly, would want to see us give a lot of support. Okay. Yes. So, you move it. Okay, second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Uh, the rest of the items will be in executive session. So um, at this point, um, whether to recess the committee or just go into executive session and go through those. Yeah, let's just go into executive session. I'll take a motion. I'll entertain a motion to go into executive session. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye.